Hi guys, my name is Alyssa and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to do your December prediction. So I am going to do a little overview of a couple things that are coming up and then I'm going to get into the signs. Um, I will have each one of the signs, so please watch the overview first and then go to your signs. We can do the sun, moon, and rising. The sun is more about your desires and the heart of the matter of the month. Your rising is definitely gonna be more like a, the mundane or what's actually going on around you in the physical world. And your moon will be how you are affected emotionally. So you can go into those like that. Also, if you like my sweatshirt, this is my new merch. I'm gonna link it below. I do have some discounts that will be at the beginning of this month. So if you're into this, try to get in on the discounts and I'll leave the dates below. But I really want to just start this video off and get down to the nitty gritty details of what is going on. Yay. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna start talking about is that December 2nd, Jupiter, which has been in Sagittarius for the last year, is gonna go into Capricorn. This will affect everybody. Now Jupiter is blessings, luck, higher learning, higher consciousness. This affects your belief system as a whole. Also, what is sort of expanded in the collective consciousness. So for the last year, we've been experiencing Saturn, I mean Sagittarius, Jupiter and Sagittarius, which has expanded awareness to the extreme. A lot of people, I don't know about you, but I felt like <laughs> I've been learning and growing every day. Every time I think that I am gonna be able to like lay down something, I look at it and I'm like, ooh, I need to redo that or I have changed my belief on the matter. Uh, because this is about really coming into your mind and what you truly believe and who you truly are in a way. Um, because we are sort of a part of our beliefs, right? And a lot of us have rejected the collective consciousness for our own higher consciousness, which has been what Jupiter wanted from us this entire time. But now that it's gone into Capricorn, or will have in December 2nd, 2019, um, <laughs> this is going to expand something a lot more physical and sustainable, I guess. Um, this is about creating your empire. You're going to see a lot more people instead of like, expanding consciousness and awareness and you know the spiritual community took off last year right and um, we're going to see now building up on top of that where can we go from here people will be a little bit more money hungry um, a little bit more fame hungry a little bit more wanting of something tangible that can sustain them for the rest of their life the 10th house also is ruled by Capricorn, which also owns the Midheaven. So when we think about this moment in time and what December will be like because of Jupiter switching from Sagittarius to Capricorn, it reaches like our sole purpose. Our sole purpose becomes the forefront of everyone's reality. Now, if you're not on the right path, which Jupiter and Sagittarius would have thwarted a lot of people, but say you didn't listen to it. Say you're just like, things aren't working out for me. It's not my fault. It's like YouTube's algorithm. It's because my boss is being a jerk. It's because nobody knows what's good for them. Say that that was plaguing your mind while Jupiter was in Sagittarius. You probably would have been avoiding the lessons that come with something not working out for you. Uh, when you feel and you think you're going in the right direction and you're like, no, I'm being led here and it's still not working out. Um, if you started blaming others outside of you and not going in to determine whether or not there was some shit that wasn't good for you anymore, um, you might have, you might be going into this next part a little bit more optimistic than you should be. Um, because Jupiter and Capricorn, Capricorn's ruled by Saturn. It's, it really wants you to have your sole purpose. It really wants you to be sustainable. And if you're trying to build your empire on a pile of beliefs that aren't true, it will crumble and it will fall. So a lot of empires that have already been built will now have the microscope on them and be like, is this empire worthy and sustainable. If not, it will crumble and fall. Is your job, is this where you're supposed to be? If not, it will crumble and fall. 
guarantee it. Jupiter can be sort of a dick, okay? And it just really can. I I know the last year Jupiter Sagittarius my brain hurts like it's exhausted from it. And I feel like a lot of people have that um, going on right now and like, oh, there's gonna be more. There's always more, there's always more pain and there's always more growth, but you know, in Jupiter's expansion, it is growth, but it's going to move from here <laughs> to out into the world. And so for those who have been learning a lot, this should bring a sigh of relief that now you get to actually put what you've learned into action in a more, you know, headstrong, sturdy way, because I feel like a lot of people too, you feel like you're, you've got what you've got and you've been trying to put it out, but your plans have been thwarted by your, your brain being like, no, that's not right yet, or it's not working, or you're tired, or whatever. This is gonna give you a lot more stability in that area. And this is gonna go on for the next year. So 2020, we've got Jupiter and Capricorn, that's great, but this December is definitely a switch over, it, and that's what I was saying about that sole purpose thing. You're aligned with your sole purpose, or are you not? The stars will let you know. Um, so I would just say be open, uh, be open to opportunity, be open to yourself, be open to your instincts, your intuition, everything, and listen to what's going on, because that's the most important thing that you can be doing during any Jupiter transit. So, with that, December 6th, uh, Saturn and Pluto are within three degrees again of each other. Now the Saturn Pluto conjunction, I'm going to talk more about when it's actually conjunct, but right now I will tell you about what this means that it's now three degrees apart and how this means like we are in the, the vicinity, you know, now we're getting pulled into this scary transit that's full of scary stuff okay for any scorpio capricorn or pluto saturn ruled person we'll let you know that whatever this is their life okay but because it's on such a great scale we have to think about what is happening for the world what does this mean for everybody and the big thing about this is that Saturn and Pluto both have a lot of karmic implications. They also seem to be negative and dark. So uh, this dark rush is coming towards everything and you know, yada, yada, yada. Now the thing is, is about this is that before Saturn gets close to Pluto, Venus has already touched base with Saturn, given it its per blessing. And then on the 13th, I believe, Venus gives Pluto her blessing, basically giving them little kisses before she moves on to Aquarius on the 20th. And why I think this is so important is because Venus is just a really nice place um, to be. <laughs> and Venus is a very powerful personal planet. And so her going over these really does for, give me a huge sign that this is going to be dark energy, but not necessarily really horrible energy. It's going to be energy that causes you to sustain your life. It's going to make sure that life can be sustained. And if that means you are an abusive person, that you are a judgmental person, that you are an evil person, that you're doing the wrong thing, that you're living one life publicly, but another life behind the scenes, it's gonna call you out. And this can be very scary. So I would say, be mindful of anybody who's sort of afraid or getting afraid because fear is what this is going to bring forward. But if you are living your best life, you have nothing to fear. If you're living by love, fear can't even break that down. And that's what I believe Venus going over actually means. Like it matters to us. It matters to those who are living or trying to live true to themselves, true to their purpose, and you know, marching forward in love and not in fear. Because fear, granted, fear is, is useful energy. Fear tells us not to do certain things. It's it's a very it can be very empowering. But if you're going home 
and you're crying yourself to sleep every night or you're afraid or you're having nightmares that are keeping you up, there's a real, real internal fear that you're not facing because you can't get through to the next moment in time and no one is meant to stay in that position of fear. And I believe what's happening to a lot of people, because I'm bringing this up because it is happening to a lot of people. A lot of people are be feeling very afraid, yet maybe nothing physical around them is actually causing this fear, but it's more of a spiritual imbalance that their feeling is coming. And what I would have you know is that whatever is spiritual, whatever is tormenting you, coming into your dreams, hurting you, you have every right to still live your physical life, still working forward and believing in yourself. And it's hard, but you can pull yourself out and you don't have to give power to your nightmares. You don't have to give power to your fears, to your insecurities, to any of that. Give power to the things that you know are true and stable in your life. And practice gratitude as well. Um, being grateful for certain things that you do have reminding yourself that you are loved. All of these things really do help you when you're really being spiritually attacked. And we all get spiritually attacked, even those who don't believe that you can get spiritually attacked, get spiritually attacked and tormented. But it's your physical life, this 3D reality that we live in, that is what this Jupiter and Capricorn is all about. And you see, we also have that Jupiter and Capricorn, which is going to go over that Saturn and Pluto. Now, like I said, Jupiter can be a dick sometimes. If you're not doing the right thing, it can put a microscope on that. And it is going to do that to that Saturn and Pluto conjunction in 2020. It's all going to line up in one big bomb explosion. But right now, everything's sort of just, you know, testing the waters. So those people who really truly believe in themselves and in love, and not only in light, I don't think that you need to believe in light because sometimes darkness is what's gonna come and if you can believe that you aren't going to die in the darkness, love, love is brighter than that light. Really, really is because we can't always be sunshines and rainbows all the time but we can know ourselves and give power to ourselves and power to the things that we can control and not try to control the things that are outside of our control, like a Saturn-Pluto conjunction, which is so outside of our control. Like in reality, does it matter? And this is something I feel, I don't think that telling you this is what's going to happen is going to make it any better than just telling you how to handle it within yourself. And that means spending time in isolation, getting to know yourself. And when things are hard outside, go down. And when things are down, hard inside, pull yourself out of it. It's all about personal strength to get in and out of the bad situations because you love yourself and you do deal with them slowly and surely and steadily during these sort of times. Anyway, so that is that. Now I want to go into the um, full moon and the new moon of this month. We have our full moon in Gemini on December 12th. Now, a Gemini full moon is a lot of clarity about the collective consciousness, about your own consciousness, about who you are in the grand scheme of things. So this adds to that December feeling of like, are you following your soul purpose? Are you connected to this consciousness? And it's, it's kind of a big deal because of the fact that Jupiter's been in Sagittarius. And by the time this Gemini full moon hits, Jupiter will be out. So it's kind of like did you, clarifying, did you learn the lessons of Jupiter? We don't always think of Jupiter as a lessons provider, but you'd be damned. I would be damned if Jupiter's not a lesson giver because it is higher learning. All Jupiter does is make you grow and expand your mind and give you lessons. And so this is clarifying who you truly are in the collective consciousness. This does not mean that this is clarifying who you are in the world. It doesn't mean that at all because your physical life is unrelated to this. So 
look at it in that way and understand that if you're going through any mental torment, any feelings of rejections, they might just be feelings, they might not be real. It might be pulling your mind out of a clicky mentality or a community or group that you don't belong in and forcing you to find a new path with new friends, with a new community. Gemini rules the third house is a lot about your community and the people that you have close contact with and, and communicate with. So we do need to sometimes see, are we doing the right thing here? And 2019 has been, it's a year of endings. It's the end of a decade. So we have to look at it like that as well. And with the, you know, 2019, you got the one and the nine together. We've also definitely felt new beginnings this year. But because December is the last month, I really do feel like we're going to just be experiencing those endings hardcore. But at the same time, hopefully, you see the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, because the tunnel, the tunnel's not going to be like a really light <laughs> tunnel, like with, like what I said, the sun shining in. December, it gets darker, it might be a little bit dark. Again, I just wanna keep bringing that stuff up, but awareness of self will give you that, that help during that full moon. And I do think there's going to be a little bit of light, or a lot of light, like, like I said, light at the end of the tunnel during that full moon in Gemini. Then um, we have our new moon in Capricorn on December 26th. See, we already had our new moon in Sagittarius, which was in November very recently and this new moon in Capricorn is the day after Christmas um, December 25th I know not everybody celebrates Christmas but majority of the people watching this video do and it is a day December 25th is a day of collective togetherness um, but having a new moon in Capricorn right there like sitting there when the Sun is with the moon in a sign where what's that called Jupiter is in this is going to be um, it could be a hard holiday season it could be sad it could be the endings it could not be what you think and I only tell you this in any sort of prediction. I would never give you information that I, is designed to hurt you or make you fear. So I want you to know that love conquers that. Love of yourself, knowing you don't have to do everything the way you're meant to do it, the way that it's you know being tasked on you. You can say no to certain things. And when things go bad, you can leave. You don't don't put yourself in any position this holiday season where you are stuck. And if you find yourself stuck, be calm, be true to yourself, and um, see if you can't think outside of the box to get yourself out of a position where you feel stuck. I would also say arguing during this time, the holiday seasons isn't going to be anybody's greatest accomplishment. In fact, there might be more personal hurt involved with anybody who decides to start arguing, um, trying to hurt somebody else. It's going to kind of come back because of that um, thing right there. So anyway, that is the main transit. And now I'm going to go into all of the signs. So thank you so much for watching that. And I will talk to you on your sign soon. Hey, hi guys. So I just want you to know that I went through all these and um, there are a lot of channeled messages. I just wanted to bring that up to you. I definitely am a person to go with the flow and try to give you what I think I'm being told by spirit to give to you. So I definitely wanted to stay true to that and not to give you something that was man-made or that I was thinking. So a lot of this is is channeled, but I do did have the transits in front of me. I was looking at them. I did want to make things as clear as I could, but I just wanted to give you a heads up on that. Anyway, check out the timestamps. Let's get to it. Okay, Aries. For those born in Aries, when Jupiter enters Capricorn, Jupiter is going to eventually square your placement. Um, this year, Jupiter is squaring you, which means that any Aries person is going to have, I mean, in the month of December and so forth, <laughs> uh, 
a big change, a big challenge. Sweeping changes. Actually, I don't think they're gonna be sweeping. Some of them might, but it's gonna be a lot of growth and power directed towards you to get you to the place that you're supposed to go. Now, this is something I have said for everybody, but it's going to be very specifically towards you and to Libra and Cancer because Jupiter is now in this squaring and up posing of all of the cardinal signs. It also means that things aren't always going to go according to plan. So it's up to you to be in control of your emotions so you don't act out in feelings, especially this month as the change has begun. And to allow the Capricorn challenge to ground you and not make you more full of rage and aggression and fire. So that starts December 2nd. So that's going to be a big pull to you all month and like I said and in 2020 but whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger and the sooner that you can start working with the transit the better correct so the next thing that I believe is going to be a big deal for you is when Mercury enters Sagittarius because this is going to give you a little bit of optimism a little bit a lot of optimism this month too which can compound your ego to make you feel like maybe you really are doing the right thing even when you're being angry also Sagittarius can expand so this Mercury entering Sagittarius that's trining your Sun sign your rising or your moon saying that yeah you are positive thinking you are doing the right thing so it's important to realize that if you are also acting out in anger there might be a disconnect and it might be your actual feelings that are pulling you in a certain way and you might not be on the right track i feel like for aries this is a big it's not a setup december but it really wants you to focus in on who you truly are as a person and who you are relating to everybody else you're not just an, an island, an isolated person who doesn't affect others, who other people have to revolve around. You are a part, you're a puzzle piece, a part of a bigger puzzle. And how do you affect the pieces around you? So I'm seeing like a ton of that for you. Um, but it's actually kind of interesting because we don't have a lot of these um, squares and things that are going to affect you this month. Basically, what I'm seeing through all of the stuff that's happening up until the 29th when Mercury then enters Capricorn, which it becomes that square to you as well, um, you're going to be feeling or thinking more optimistically than you actually are. So you might be told or might feel like maybe you should manifest things or practice the law of attraction, but I would say that's not a good time to do that. This is a really good time to work and to know that all of your work will be blessed by a sound mind. But if you just work on your mind and not what your body's actually doing, you're going to fall flat and be backwards and the end of the month was not gonna be a good time for you. But I believe that if you do work, it will be a great time for you. Now, the new moon in Capricorn is on the 26th right before so that new moon squares Aries and so you get this every year but because it is right after Christmas this is another thing that I'm just going to compound about what I said for everybody but I really see it just manifesting this way a lot for the Aries placements things aren't going to go according to plan so maybe don't plan so heavily let go of the things you can't control really try to go with the flow Get on that ride of emotion. Use all of the elements. Here we have a lot of earth squaring your fire. What is, what's with the water in, in the air, you know? How's that happening? That air there is in Sagittarius, training your mind, pulling you out of yourself a little bit to give you more optimism, which is nice, but then that water. Where is the water? Mars is in Scorpio, that's your ruling planet. That's going to be happening the entire month. So think about that as well that your anger is being run away with this water so you might not realize how impactful your feelings are 
this month until it's too late until you've ostracized yourself or until you've hurt the people that you love but if you really can pay attention to those feelings and really work towards the things that you want i believe you'll be fine you'll know just don't let your ego or um, any belief super hyper positive belief in yourself get the better of you during this time and you're going to be just fine so that is you for december aries and i will talk to you later Hi Taurus, this is for you. So when Jupiter goes into Capricorn on the second, this is going to be some much needed um, break for Taurus because Sagittarius Jupiter wasn't the nicest to Taurus. Taurus likes to be stuck in its ways and the Sagittarius was definitely pulling and rebelling against Taurus for a long time. So now I feel like this is more up your alley. You wanna work? So get to work, bitch. That's, you know, okay. So you want a hot body and a Maserati, get to work, bitch. It's a perfect time starting December for Taurus to get on it. And I don't see much holding you back except for this full moon and Mercury going in Sagittarius, which is going to challenge your belief of yourself. It's not going to make you feel like... <laughs> that great um so you are in control of how great you feel right and um, sometimes this can mean when you start to work on yourself and you really get this stuff in motion and you start going forward you realize how far behind you actually fell right and so when that when that clarity arises and you can look at your life and you're like I've just been learning and growing so much or and it's been hurting and I've been changing and life has just been out of my control but now it's finally in my, in my control and it's like a swamp. I don't know even what to do next. So I would say make sure you remember yourself. Mercury's in Sagittarius, that's not a great place for Mercury to be in your life but it happens every year so it's okay and that's on December 9th. Um, but Venus is in Capricorn during this time. So allow that Capricorn reality to benefit you, right? Allow yourself to feel blessed. And obviously at the, in the middle of the month, December 22nd, the sun is going to go into Capricorn. That should feel a little bit, um, more like you've actually started to accomplish something. So utilizing that Capricorn energy that you're building towards something, instead of those negative self doubts and negative self talk that you might be doing because all this clarity is pulling at you in a way. Um, sometimes mental clarity doesn't feel that good, especially after you've already been through the ringer, you kind of want it to be cleared up at this point and think, oh, you know what, I went through the ringer and now I'm free to build, so it should be easy. And it's never easy because once once something comes in, like once a tornado hits your house, you can be hiding out, you can be feeling it, you can be fighting for your life. And then it leaves and then you're left with the ruins. And this is what I feel like December is going into 2020 is really trying to help you out with, is that. So allow yourself to work, allow yourself to focus on your own intention and who you truly are and to be to be in love with yourself again to learn to love yourself again for who you are not for who you wish you could be i think that's an important thing you need to you know look in the mirror tell yourself you're loved tell yourself you are already beautiful you are already strong you are already stable you're already happy Tell yourself those things because you can make them true starting now. And they will help you combat those negative self-talks that you're probably going to be doing like every day anyway, pushing down. Like, please, I don't hate myself. I don't hate myself. But you got to like be aware of what you're doing. Like, <laughs> you're probably, if you are, I feel like this is coming to me. This might not be for you. You might not be feeling this. This is like a general reading, but this is what I keep feeling is that, this negative stuff is just like rising up at you and maybe it even has been for a while like you're stupid you can't do this you know you should just go do what you're good at but you're like but wait no I want to do this you're fighting that 
So starting to like look at yourself and to tell yourself that, you know, you are okay. You, you are wonderful. You are beautiful and you you work hard. And then t to like get yourself to a point where you can look at that negative self-talk and be like, that's not even from me. That's not even true. It's just fear trying to overtake me and get me off my path again when this is a better time for you than all of last year was. Because you are ruled by Venus, Venus going into Aquarius is going to uh, really shift you from this Capricorn, which was giving you um, a, a desire to stabilize yourself and to work. And now it's going to seem a little bit different um, because Aquarius is ruled by Uranus, <laughs> which is a big change. Okay. And um, Uranus is already in the sign of Taurus. So here we have this mutual um, reception going on. Venus is in the sign of Aquarius and its ruler Uranus is in the sign of Taurus, which is ruled by Venus. So mutual reception, that's what that's called. So that means a big change you can expect on, why do I keep losing when Venus goes into Aquarius? I wish I could remember all the dates in my head. Um, then December 20th. So December 20th is just like, this is going to be, it's going to feel like powerful. And so if you've been building and working and trying to at least, you know, clean up that tornado's mess or whatever happened to you, that mess, then you're all of a sudden going to be given this like power and this light that you're sort of holding on to. And if you can be strong enough and be powerful enough to hold on to that, you can ride that wave and be your own tornado, I guess, <laughs> with your own stuff and to build something that's so much better than it was before it was ripped apart. And so that's a really good time for you. And then Mercury's gonna enter Capricorn, um, which will be nice for you as well because your mind will feel in a more stable situation, um, even during this Capricorn season. So I feel like the end, by New Year's, I think you're gonna have some like good karma restored um, to just feel a little bit more at ease. It's not like it's gonna be easy, but you're gonna feel more at ease personally. So practice that self-love and um, change that intention from one of sadness and hurt to one of like, I'm better than the position I'm in, I deserve more. Anna, that is your Taurus. Okay, uh, Gemini. So Jupiter is going into Capricorn. Uh, Jupiter is rules your opposing sign. So wherever Jupiter goes, it's sort of like the collective consciousness is going there, but you're always like not with it anyway, unless Jupiter is doing something that's very important to you. Now Jupiter going into Capricorn, it's just not that important to you unless you have some Capricorn placements or something that is, it, you know, needs Jupiter, or needs Capricorn in its life. Um, so, I would say, you know, you're going to be riding like underneath that wave or above that wave of that Jupiter this year. Um, I do think a huge growth for you happened over this last year and that growth is going to slow down a little bit and you might actually feel in December a little bit, uh, I, it might be blindsided for some people, but it might just be, it might be a relief for others. Um, Sometimes we can get used to like the growth and when it stops, we can feel like nothing's happening and so we can create some drama. So I would say don't create a lot of drama this month, although you might want to, uh, especially when December 9th, Mercury enters Sagittarius, which is opposite. We're already in Sagittarius season, so it's opposing you. You don't have to uh, start any fights, I guess, um, <laughs> during that time. And then we have the full moon in Gemini on December 12th. So a lot of clarity about where you're going. In a way, this feels like, I'm gonna say in a way it feels like your half birthday because guess what, it is your half birthday. Um, but it's gonna be a really strong half birthday, which means like, this is for you to really look at your year and to be like, so what's what's happening with yourself? Like, where have you been? Where are you going? And then it might be a time to make changes accordingly. Did certain things work for you at the beginning of the year? Well, they might not be working now. So instead of pushing through with those same things, do something different. Make a change. Do it for yourself. I think you're going to have a, a very easy ability this month to 
you know, look outside of everything and to observe. So you might want to just take a seat and observe, especially if you can. If you're still having to grind for something, I understand, but if you can actually take some time and to observe other people's behaviors, see see people for who they truly are and not for who you believed them to be, instead of sort of causing drama, I guess. I don't know. I feel like this is a dramatic year for you. So a dramatic year. Yeah, I guess 2020 is gonna be a dramatic year for you. Yeah, I don't know why I feel that right now, but that just came to me and that seems right. Um, this December is going to start the drama, but you're in control of your own life and you're in control of your own drama. So I don't think you have to worry about that too much. Um, another thing is, let's see. Venus enters Aquarius. I like this date for you. December 20th, sorry. <laughs> and, um, look, on December 20th, Venus is going to enter a sign that trines yours. And it, it matters to you because Venus rules Libra, which also is another trine. Um, but it's going into Aquarius, another air sign. So there's this big blessing to you. And I don't, it feels like that could be a time where, um, I mean, like you, if you're in a committed relationship, you could be being proposed to or something. Um, and maybe the drama that happens in 2020 is because you're planning a wedding or maybe you're planning on proposing. It could be something like that. There seems to be this very romantic out of the box thing that's going to be happening. Like something, a whirlwind that you never thought would happen. And if it doesn't happen like that, it could be, you know, just kind of signifying that this might be it. Are you in a stable relationship? Is it new? Like this might be something that feels more real to you than, than you even realize. And that might be a moment like that you're just like, huh, I am in love. I'm in love like I never knew I was or something like that. Um, in which case, that's probably why it's a good idea at the beginning of the month and the whole month to observe things to see like to make sure that you know where you're going <laughs> and what you want to do and do you want to be do you want to be in a committed relationship too because this could be a time that you're just like proposed to and you're like well I didn't expect that because Aquarius Venus and Aquarius anything can happen like that um it can be a huge unexpected event in love for you um yeah, and then the new moon in Capricorn, this is, uh, and then Mercury is going to enter Capricorn. So Mercury is your sign. And uh, Mercury enters Capricorn on the 29th after the new moon in Capricorn on the 26th. So you are going to be putting down your stability um, and building towards something that is going to really work for you. Maybe there's like, this is something I'm also seeing for Gemini is that there might've been something that was growing around you, you know, but it wasn't very stable. It caused you to have to grind to keep it going. And so at the end of December, as long, and if, as long as you take that time at the beginning of December to see where you wanna go next, um, you can really actually start laying down blocks to build, to make what you grew stable whether that is a relationship or a career, friendships, like network, whatever that is for you, it can become more stable at the end of the month and going into 2020, especially if it's going to be a dramatic year. <laughs> um, you want to be able to build as much as you can. And so really that is what I'm seeing for you, Gemini, in December. And I will talk to you later. Bye. Okay, Cancer. Hi, Cancer. So Jupiter is going to enter Capricorn, which is your opposite sign on the second and be there through 2020. So Jupiter going into your opposite sign can feel like a big gut punch and sort of hurt you in a way of like pulling you out of yourself. Like the only way to get ahead is to not be you anymore. And I've been saying this in like the last couple um, prediction videos about cancer. I know I think in October I was like be more Aries. So I'm like really trying to pull you out of yourself. And I think it's um, in a way just to soften the blow of Jupiter and Capricorn because when Jupiter is in Capricorn, it's going to definitely feel like you can't just 
be anymore. And so you were fighting for a reason and I think you were just fighting for yourself to be able to be. Because just because Jupiter is lucky and it feels lucky and it makes optimism and it's pulling at your other sign, it doesn't mean that you're doing the wrong thing by you by any means. And so you have to fight for your right to be you. Of course, you also have to find balance within the collective. And so finding balance within the collective is that you are the anchor. <laughs> And you are powerful and strong enough within yourself to anchor people from going out of control, from being ruthless, from hurting, from sabotaging, especially during the Pluto-Saturn conjunction. Because Saturn rules this Capricorn and Pluto is in Capricorn and that is all opposite to you. So are you strong? Are you powerful? Because it's up to you. I know, I'm sorry, not sorry, but how do you keep people warm and friendly and kind and feeling and sympathetic when everybody is like power hungry and ego focused, you really had to spend all this time taking care and nurturing yourself and not, and closing yourself off to other people, practicing boundaries, because during this time you're going to be getting hurt a lot um, if you aren't prepared because people aren't going to be nice like you are. And not saying that cancers are nice, that's a lie because you're not always nice but you're easily taken advantage of. Wherever cancer is in your chart, people tend to look at that like, like it's a, a sheep and they're a wolf and they wanna eat it. Um, so you have, you have to protect that cancer power at all costs um, because it, it, it's not a, you're not a sacrificial lamb, okay? You are the powerful cancer, the moon, the female, the goddess the night goddess. And um, we can't all be working in one direction and forgetting ourselves and forgetting our humanity. And so this is up to you. And this is kind of the big, the first hit for you in December is are you going to be that? And that does not mean pulling everybody together like my family doesn't want to hang out. So I need to be the like for Christmas. So I'm going to like call everybody up and make sure that they show up. Don't put that on you, that's too much already. You are already gonna have issues. If people don't want to do things, let them go. Be stable by being what we look at to know what to do. Lead by example. That was what I wanted to say, lead by example during this whole entire thing. So now we have the full moon in Gemini and the full moon always, um, it affects you. You are the moon. So when the moon goes into Gemini, this is going to be logical awareness for you and a lot of clarifying of your mission. So you have been trying to focus in on a mission. What is that? You're going to find out. It's going to be pretty exciting. So pay attention. You're getting communicated with. You know what to do instinctually. And I think a lot of this last year has just been trying to expand your own consciousness and your own awareness. Like, are you, are you better utilized when you're being taken advantage of? Or are you better utilized when you see that there is power in life and power in connection and power in boundaries? Because you're not supposed to be saving one person at a time, healing one person at a time so that they can just go do shit and come back and take advantage of you again. That's not how that works. So this is a lot about you realizing that. And then um, when the sun's gonna go into Capricorn, your opposite sign on December 22nd, all this more energy that's opposing you. Uh, I do think for Cancers that, you know, Capricorn season I think would be very dark for you and I think it is more in January, but Cancers do love like tradition and family and here we have Christmas, right? We have the holidays. We have all these things that people get to join in together as families. And so I think that Cancer looks forward to this every year, but I wonder if it works out the way you want it to work out every time you're there, because it's like, it's better on paper. And maybe if the holiday season was in Cancer, everybody would be a lot happier and it would work, but that Capricorn comes in and it's like that that karmic tradition, that that ancestry, those, family curses that are just upon everybody and that you end up in the middle of healing. So practice your boundaries over the holiday season a lot. Practice not having to speak your mind to people and firing them up. Sometimes you just walk away and leave and don't return until everybody else fixes themselves. This isn't about you. 
having to heal them. Like I said, that's a common thing right here. And then you have the new moon in Capricorn. So here you are joined with the Capricorn on the 26th. So that's important. <laughs> um, because it is going to make you feel maybe a little bit of out of body, uh, maybe a little bit sick, you might get sick, you might um, get a little bit ruthless, do things you're not, you don't realize. But also, I want you to know that it's important to go with the flow. You know, the moon goes into Capricorn every month. This just happens to be when it meets up with the sun. It happens every year. Um, and what that, but that, what that means for you is that if you know, if you experience this and you you're good with your moon transits and you write them down and everything you're you can you can see what will happen and you can know what normally happens to you but if you're not if you're new to this um pay attention to what happens to you on the 26th because this will happen to you every year every time there's a new moon and capricorn but i just feel like that is like your biggest yearly transit if i had to be honest like this is what changes the game for you but it's your flow and you have to go with your flow. So even if it seems out of body, trust your instincts. It might be growing you and pulling you in a way that causes you to be stronger and more powerful and um, more in line with that powerful cancer nature of who you are. Everyone calls cancer sensitive. Cancer is only sensitive when they don't wanna be themselves. When cancer is not sensitive, it's because they are fully immersed in their water and they are powerful forces to be reckoned with and that is what you're meant to become um, not a sensitive empathic person with no boundaries who makes people laugh and then cries themselves to sleep and watches the notebook with ice cream uh, you can do that sometimes but that's not cancer's power otherwise they're i mean the moon the earth that's who you're ruled by and that's all the earth is for that's all life is for no you're much more than that. And so figure out what that is and how much power you have. And that it's okay to be, you know, still within yourself and to know that there are people who are looking at you like it's lunchtime, but was, if they go after you, they're going to die. So remember that, tell yourself that. Anyone who comes after you is going to die because you carry the power during all this Capricorn stuff because you are the anchor. And um, that is your December prediction. I'll talk to you later. Okay, hi Leo. So Leo, this is your December. <laughs> and I say that because that's what I'm really feeling. That's the sort of the message I'm getting about December for you guys. It is your December, metaphorically. If you've never heard that, that's going to sound stupid and that I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, it's your dark time. This is a dark time. And um, it's not, it shouldn't be scary because you have love on your side. You have your heart. You have your desires. You have that power. Uh, but things for fire right now, like the fire signs, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, are not going really according to their plans. So whatever plans you've had, um, let go of them doesn't mean that you're not going to achieve them, but just let go of them a little bit. You can't control them right now. There is something moving against the Leo right now. Um, and to be honest, the reason why I'm feeling this because of all of trying to fit all these trances into it is that Leo has the want, it has the heart. And it's ruled by this collective heart too. But if the collective heart has become more narcissistic and egocentric as of late, as we know, because everybody knows everybody's a narcissist, right? At this point, um, Leo's really getting um, confused on what to do. So majority of, of Leos are getting confused. This doesn't mean you're bad. This doesn't mean you're good. This doesn't mean anything. It just means this is what's happening to Leo. And um, we're reaching a pinnacle of karmic adjustments, the hammer being laid down on people who are not living from their heart, but from their ego. And during the buildup to this time, you might have been getting things that have told you you're on the wrong path. And you might have felt like there's no fucking way that I'm on the wrong path. I'm on the right path. I'm going to keep forcing this to happen. 
If you keep forcing the wrong path to happen when it's just been whispering in your ear, this is going to seem so dark and heavy because you weren't supposed to be here in the first place. You've been ignoring the universe for your ego needs. Now, the heart, the heart is love and that is powerful and it is strong. And the heart listens to everything before it acts. And it doesn't like to hurt itself. It wants to stay alive. So the heart only acts like a lion. A lion is not going around eating up everybody. You've seen The Lion King. They only eat when they are hungry. The hyenas eat everything, but the hyenas are the representative of the ego. It goes around and eats up everything even when it doesn't need it. So if that's what's been happening, it's going to be a problem. But if, you, if you've been living from your heart and you're only taking what belongs to you and you're very thoughtful and practicing wisdom and listening to what the universe is telling you, you will probably not be in the wrong place at the wrong time. But if you haven't, this December is definitely the wrong place at the wrong time for many of you. And um, I mean, all of these transits in this year, like this, I've just been seeing so much of that for Leos. They've been having a hard time because the thing is, is with these transits, I'm thinking like the end of like August, September, October, there would have been something that happened, um, which if you accepted it um, as something that would hurt you or something that would make you look stupid or um, hurt your ego or hurt your reputation, you would have said, no, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna go down that route. My reputation is all that matters. There are a lot of transits preparing you for that. So now, 10th house Capricorn in this season and Sagittarius leading to that and um, Jupiter's in Capricorn already December 2nd I'm finally getting to the transits I just feel like this channeled message is way more important than the transits it's about you fully understanding that um, you now have to reap what you didn't run away from it might have hurt your reputation a little bit in the summer and fall in that transition. It might have hurt it. You might have felt stupid. You might have had to be like, shit, I did the wrong thing and now I gotta make up for it. But if you didn't listen, then now this is full force against your reputation and it's gonna hurt way worse. But there's still in time, there's still an out. If you're pushing through something that's not for you, just listen to the universe. It's attacking you right now. It's like trying to make you pay attention. So that can be like, are you in a marriage? That would be very embarrassing if you left. Are you at a job that you've worked so hard for that if you you know, left because it's not working, everyone would make fun of you or they'd be like, oh, he couldn't or she couldn't stick it out during this hard time. These hard times were not meant for you to fight against at this point. These hard times were trying to tell you that actually it's harder to leave but it might be what you need to do. Is it easier to stay or is it easier to go? At this point, it's definitely easier to stay, but it's not what the universe wanted. It wanted you to go. And I don't know what that is for you and I don't know where it is for you on you know, your, on your <laughs> event timeline because everybody is different. You all have a lot of things going on, but it's something. It's definitely something for these Leo placements to try to figure out what was it that you should have left? And if you haven't left it, is there still time? And there is still time. Venus in Aquarius on December 20th might tell you something otherwise because there's this love, the planet of love, um, going into your opposite sign. And that can change the game for you. Um, that can mean your blessings are so far away that anything that was kind of keeping you going is, not, is no longer happening for you. And then when the sun goes into Capricorn, on the 20th or the 22nd, sorry, the two days afterwards, you might see that all of your long-term goals really have no basis in reality anymore. It's all gone. I'm not trying to, this is, I don't want to scare you because your love of yourself, if it's true love of yourself is more important than fear of anything. But love 
is love. Ego is not love. And so it's this message might be hard to hear or it might, you know what? For those of you who are following that and you're like, I did leave. I left and it was hard and I went through hell, but I already, I, I get what you're saying. I already feel better. You know, this isn't going to hurt you. And I don't want to hurt anybody. Um, but this is just the message I'm getting. It's the only one that I have for you actually. And I didn't actually think it was going to come out because I wasn't even feeling it before. And it just popped out of my mouth. So it's just, it's really what I'm feeling for the Leo placements. And, um, I want you also to know you're going to be okay. Okay. You're going to be fine. Um, we need your warrior heart, your lion's heart. We need it so bad. Um, you're getting into your half birthday and you're going to be looking at yourself and that's why the universe was trying to tell you to leave something leave this Because if you leave this you won't be in the wrong place at the wrong time It was a gift from the universe, but sometimes we just don't we ignore gifts in favor of ourselves so you still have time and If you don't like what I said, that's cool. You don't have to listen to anything. I'm saying just listen to yourself listen to your true heart and um, not what your reputation is telling you, not your fears of what might change or what might happen if you choose to follow what is right for you. Just listen to that to you. Um, and yeah, that is your Leo for December. And I will see you later, guys. Okay, hi, Virgo. These are your December transits, and I've been channeling some predictions up in this point. I didn't realize. So we'll see what happens. So December 2nd, when Jupiter enters Capricorn, this is kind of really nice for you because Capricorn trans Virgo. Virgo likes when things are being done, and Jupiter and Capricorn will now allow things to be done. So if you have some heavy Virgo placements, December is going to feel a lot more productive for you finally because a Sagittarius, Jupiter Sagittarius has been square your sign and that hasn't felt good at all because it's been stopping you, forcing you to expand when you're definitely much more detail oriented and like things firmly rooted in reality. But now that your mind has expanded, you've grown, you get to put what you know back into detail oriented behavior in a position of power and growing on a physical plane, on this 3D plane. A lot of people in spiritual communities, the spiritual community, real, like all this kind of spiritual reality, which you're probably only watching this if you are ever going that, but I mean, maybe not. Uh, we tend to believe that our 3D reality is not that important, but as Virgos, you should know always that your 3D reality is very important because what is spirit if you have no spiritual legacy to live on after you're gone and we don't create a spiritual reality by avoiding our physical reality and so if you've had to pull out of your physical body for a while if you've had a lot of like feelings that maybe you've always done it the wrong way because you've always cared about this 3d reality i want you to know that now you're finally going to get to go back into your physical reality your 3d world and make it better this is going to be very good for you. Now on December 9th, Mercury enters Sagittarius and we still are in Sagittarius. So it's not like this is a Hail Mary and it's fixing you at the last moment. This is just the first sign that things are going to get better. But until Mercury goes into Capricorn, until the sun goes into Capricorn, you're still going to have this Sagittarius pulling yourself outside of yourself, believing that spirituality doesn't actually include the body or the earth, which is a lie. So as long as I can tell you this right now, don't lie to yourself. Don't believe the lie that the Virgo is not important, that the virgin, the female, the life that lives off Gaia, the earth is not important because it absolutely is. It creates the spirit. The spirit of life is within you by being alive, by smelling the roses, by growing your garden, by creating your things, by building your fortune, by leaving your legacy. That is true. So don't believe the lie that you can get outside your body and make things happen better because you in your skill has always been your mind within your body, seeing things as they are and fixing them. Virgos are going to heal the earth. 
heal the earth of global warming, heal the earth of whatever ailments it has. That is Virgo's job here. And I feel like you're getting into this point and this purpose where that's going to happen because a Saturn Pluto conjunction that's going to happen in 2020 that we're heading into, this is powerful for you. It's showing you how you're going to go heal the earth. And that doesn't mean you're going to go out to the earth and heal it with your hands or, <laughs> or be an activist or something. Everything, everybody has a different purpose and everybody's purpose relates to the one thing. And the Virgos is just more closely in line with what Gaia, with the, what the earth needs. And so, um, let's see, when Venus enters Aquarius on December 20th, right before the sun enters Capricorn, I see this as a little bit hard for you uh, because it's going to be a point where you're going to wonder if I'm lying to you. Yep, you're gonna get to, well, Alyssa was telling the falsehoods again. <laughs> this isn't true. You're definitely gonna have to like, you know, manifest your reality outside of this and the 3D plane doesn't matter and there's no reason to live. And I, I'm feeling that way for you and I, I'm trying to put my finger up, but I do feel like it's definitely a more channeled message. I'm just staring at that. And it's like a, because it's a pull, it's, it's an inconjunct. You're, you're feeling pulled from the knowledge and belief of self into another place. But once, and so those couple of days might be depressing. It's more like what I'm saying. Not like you're going to be thinking of me those days, but you might now because I told you it would be. <laughs> That's what predictions do. They make things happen. I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, so what I would say is look at that and, um, you know, use that time to really, you know, make sure that you believe the truth of why you're here. And that's just because somebody told you who you are and what you're doing. But this is about making sure you believe. And if you don't, yeah, you will question what other people have told you, what you believe in yourself. And that's good. Question that. And then the sun goes into Capricorn, you're going to be able to go on that flow of self and build more from yourself and get shit done that you need to get done. Um, and that's the power that you're going to bring into 2020. So December, really utilize that um, for growth. Grow your garden. I mean, I know it's not garden growing time in the winter, but internally it is. It's it's deciding what you're going to plant. It's deciding uh, where you're going to plant it. And so a lot of what the transits that I'm looking at here, um, that's what I... That's what I see for you. Now we do have the full moon in Gemini on December 12th. Um, and that matters because Gemini is also ruled by Mercury. And that means that you're going to be in a T-square with the full moon. So kind of backtracking there. Um, and this is going to be a big like enlightening. It's going to definitely light you up and empower you. So if December 20th kind of to me feels a little bit more depressing for you before then December 12th, I think you're going to have like a high so if you have a high high and you have a low low, um, maybe you can just expect that that's okay in December and to go with the flow, like to allow yourself those highs and to allow yourself those lows and to figure out each reason for them. Um, why things work out, why things don't work out because you're gonna have some of those moments in December. And that's okay. I just keep wanting to say that's okay. Whatever happens in December, it's okay that it's happening you're meant to be in this position right now. And I do feel like maybe something's happening to the world and you're you're listening, you're part of it. You're hearing it out and you're going through the ebbs and the flows that Gaia is, like that the earth is, and you're connected to it. And so you're, you're purposefully connecting, like unconsciously connecting. So if you can make that purposeful, it will go quicker. It will be more painless. Um, allowing yourself to just realize this is where you belong. You belong on earth. You belong here. You belong in this reality and you're going to do something with this reality because only you can. Sometimes I always think, sometimes I always think, I always think of Virgos, uh, I've sometimes told you, but I always think of Virgos as the real superheroes. They get things done on the physical plane. They don't have to fly to do it. That is what I feel like you're coming into. Your superhero power of getting stuff done. And so stay in your lane, stay, you know, proud of yourself and empower with yourself and everything will be okay in December and know that it's all coming to a head to get you on your true path. And uh, that is for you, Virgo. Talk to you later. Bye.
Libra, this is your December prediction. Um, so basically, to jump right into it, on December 2nd, Jupiter enters Capricorn. And Capricorn is square your sign. Now, all last year, Jupiter was in Sagittarius, which I do feel like led a lot of Libra placements um, to drink. And I'm only going to say that because there was a social aspect to this in the charts of the Libra that made you want to connect on a more mundane way because this Sagittarius Jupiter was definitely pulling at your consciousness a lot, causing you to grow, albeit maybe not the most painful of ways, but just putting you outside of yourself, testing your beliefs. And for Libra who likes to weigh and balance everything, this was not the most fun that they've ever had in their lifetime. <laughs> So Jupiter entering Capricorn will seem like this is not so good for Libra, but the thing is, is that Libra does pretty well in their squares because the challenge aspect, the challenge point of a square to Libra is actually something that makes the decision for them. And so Jupiter and Capricorn makes the decision for Libra that it's time to get off the couch, get off the self-pity wagon, get off whatever you were on and work yourself into a frenzy. How that makes sense? I was gonna say work bitch and then like I already did that. I already said work bitch. So um, Venus, your ruling planet, is actually in Capricorn already by this time and Jupiter is entering Capricorn. So basically you're getting a lot of this square, a lot of this challenge to work, to put your house in order, to challenge yourself. And it will feel a little bit like the decision has been made for you. This decision to work that you've probably been weighing out, do I do this or do I go to sleep? I'm super fucking tired, should I do that or should I move forward? And moving forward probably hasn't been what's happened. Um, the harmonious aspect of the sextile of Jupiter and even the Venus being in Sagittarius in the last month in November could have caused a lot of no action. So much non-action. It's led to this much needed, please can I have some action and December is going to bring you action. Now Mercury was in Scorpio and now it's going to be in Sagittarius on December 9th, which is really powerful. Uh, for your mind to keep it expanding even when you're leaving the Sagittarius energy. I mean, obviously the sun is still in Sagittarius. There's still that harmonious action. So there's not going to be like a dreadful, you're doing nothing and then now, you know, like whip and then get you into action. Uh, but there is going to be like a, up until the end of the month, you're going to feel like things are finally aligning for you in a powerful way decisions are being made for you even if not all decisions are being made if that makes sense now last month for libra i said that uh you are going to have sort of there would be a lot of challenge for a lot of people and you would sort of get the easy way out that didn't mean that it was going to be easy it meant that a lot of the karmic forces were not going to be attacking you during this time because you were going to be learning how to protect yourself by the earth, by listening to the universe, whatever might have happened, you were being protected. And I do think that's where a lot of maybe non-action came for a lot of Libra placements. A lot of non-action because any action would have caused a reaction, which would have caused you to be front and center in this painful fight that was going on in the collective consciousness last month. So this month though is definitely a challenge for you there is definitely going to be reactions to your actions but i think you're prepared for them now now when we get into the full moon in gemini december 12th um this is going to be trying sextile to you gemini is trying you on the moon there's a lot of clarity this will be pretty nice for you um as far as clarity and wisdom go but if you are a libra who sort of still, you know, hiding out, doesn't want to move forward, doesn't want there to be a reaction to her actions or his actions, then you might find that like this, this isn't nice. You don't want this sort of clarity. You don't want this light shining on the signs that are in harmonious aspect to you because you might be getting called out in some way for something negative that happened. So keep that in mind. Like you're going to have to put yourself out there. I know you're tired and you probably don't want to maybe. I mean, like some of you might want to, some of you probably want to, but it's also like, 
really now? How do I even do it? How do I put one foot in front of the other? I mean, you just like that, you just gotta go and tell yourself to put one foot in front of the other and then it will happen. Um, so then after that you have Venus entering Aquarius right before the sun goes into Capricorn to create sort of that huge challenge for you. Um, so Venus is going to leave Capricorn, go into Aquarius, which means that you're going to get some power because Venus is your ruling planet and it's in the sign of Uranus, which is rebellion as well as like a flip-flop, a sudden flip. So this could mean that something that you've wanted is coming towards you, coming for you, especially if you're working for it because Aquarius is co-ruled by Saturn, which wants you to work. And with all this Venus and Capricorn having you work, you're definitely need to get your ass into gear. This means you might be pushing up against some pretty strong forces that feel psychologically painful or physically painful, depending on what industry you're in or what um, position you are in, how your marriage is going, how your circle of friends looks, like all those little areas. But for the most part, it's Capricorn, Sagittarius. So it's, it's probably work and your work probably has something to do with your sole purpose or aligning yourself with that. So it's important that you also try to realize like, are you on the right path? And is that what all of this non-action was doing? Telling you you're not on the right path because you just don't like it anymore. You don't care about it. So that's a big question to ask yourself, Libra, in the month of December. Is it easier to stay doing this um, or is it easier to go? because it's going to be hard to push yourself back. So is it worth it? Is it worth it that when you, once you clean up your mess and you start building again, is it worth it to keep building the same thing or do you want to do something else? You're allowed to do something else. Now for Leo, I just had this long conversation with them <laughs> about how um, they might have been ignoring some strong warning signs and they're gonna be in the wrong place at the wrong time. This kind of affects Libra in the same way. If there was a warning sign, that you weren't listening to, that maybe you were just under the influence of somebody else for too long, or um, you know, under the lights, the bright lights, and you liked them and you wanted to stay there, you could end up this month sort of feeling like this, these closed in walls around you. Like you're, you're trying to work and you're just like, God, I really don't want to do this anymore. This is too hard. There's going to be, the payout isn't that important because I'm not aligned with it. I'm not aligned with what I thought I was aligned with because I mean, basically Libra has to start realizing what it wants, the desires of your heart. What do you desire? Capricorn doesn't, it, it's such a challenge makes that decision for you, you have to work for this if you want it, that if Libra's heart's on it, it's just, Libra's gonna cut and run. And so that's what you need to be paying attention to. And maybe cutting and running for some of you is exactly what you have to do. It's not always a downfall of the sign, right? I know Libra gets made fun of a lot. I am a Libra, so I'm not trying to like, you know, input myself here, but you know, when you're reading like the memes of Libras, Libras always got like, you know, eight people on hold or on red while they're complaining about not having a boyfriend. That is true of Libra. You might have a few jobs coming towards you, but you're pining over this one that's not here for you, that's not looking for you. It's time to cut and run from that one and maybe go back into the the people that you've left on red. But actually, if you've left them on red, if you've left these other opportunities on red, that they may not be the right ones either. Just because they're there doesn't mean it's good. Use the Capricorn challenge to challenge yourself either in or out. Know there's gonna be a challenge and know that the challenge is gonna work out for you. And that is your, your biggest, um, I think, December reading is that you're going to get some power at the end of the month and you're going to get some good challenge to work hard and strong and fast and swift. Unless you don't want it, then you're not gonna do it. Pay attention to you. Anna, that is your Libra December, right? Okay. Hi, Scorpio. So Scorpio, December 2nd, Jupiter enters Capricorn. We are in Sagittarius season, which is the season right after yours. So you're just building into this year so far. 
We've had a lot of Sagittarius energy, which is fine for the Scorpio. It's not so dangerous. It's just one octave past the Scorpio. But when we start getting into Capricorn, you're going to start getting this harmony, okay? And lo and behold, Saturn is trying to meet up with Pluto. So getting any Capricorn energy right now just seems to be like putting you in position to live up to the Saturn-Pluto transit conjunction that everybody's talking about, right? Because it's a part of you. Uh, but the harmony of this can make the Scorpio do some shady shit during this next year and you might start feeling it right away. Now, you might start doing or feeling like a need to do shady things against somebody who's wronged you or maybe you just are feeling it because for shits and giggles it doesn't you don't know why you're feeling this but it's just coming to you and you're like man i really need to to go underground and be mysterious and mess something up and i would say just be aware of all of your wants to do anything like that um, because you may you might not have to do anything at all. Uh, karma is going to work itself out for you. You don't need to be the one pulling the trigger, although it might be so easy to do so that you do it without yourself thinking about it. So I guess I just want you to be aware of it um, because not all of that stuff is bad. Sometimes karma is bestowed upon somebody because someone makes action. Now this sounds like I'm telling somebody to pull karma. No, I'm not trying to tell you to do that. I'm trying to tell you to go with the flow as long as your heart is pure. Okay. Because if your heart is pure, you will be used to end evil. That's a huge deal for you. You will be used as a hammer to lay down the law and to end shitty things from happening to good people. But if your ego is in it at all, you will use this energy to destroy somebody who is just a normal person living their life like you are. But how will you know? Because your ego is in the way saying, kill this person. And I say kill, I don't mean like actually murder because the majority of the people who are watching this don't have murdering instincts, okay? Even you Scorpios. <laughs> but saying killing someone, taking down somebody, their reputation, their taking something that they love. Whatever those things are, you might feel like this would be a really good time to, you know, just take it out. Um, but if that happens, then the karma is going to be laid down against you and you're going to be exposed for being awful. So really, honestly, truly follow your heart. Open up your heart um, to, you know, receiving blessings, receiving an order from the universe to go and do the will of the universe. Um, I mean, it's all being decided for you. You can't really run away from that. You just have to be able to be clear and cleansed. And if you feel a lot of negativity and stuff, take a salt bath, like an Epsom salt bath or like sea salt bath or whatever, because that negativity, people's energies can be affecting you physically. And so if you have heavy Scorpio placements, um, you could be carrying other people's negative energy that's affecting you in your own heart, making it really hard to know if whether or not what you're doing is like evil intent or for the good and will of the universe. And I, this is funny because I feel like so weird saying this. So Scorpio, like everything I just said, it feels like weird to say it. Okay. I don't know why. It's just like, it's not something I'm supposed to say. Cause it almost sounds like I'm telling you to be negative with this. Like you're going to go take out karma for people. So I want my intention to be very clear here. Um, this is about you following the will of the universe and your own heart, not ego, not evil, and not the influence of others. If you or any part of you is, you know, bogged down by the will of somebody else is, you know, listening to somebody else influenced by somebody else in an empathic way or a physical way or a mental way, Get out from under that this month. That's your time to leave, to not be controlled, to not be arguing, to not be fighting every step of the way to get to where you need to be, but to leave it. Just cut and run. Get out before it's too late. Um, 
and you're already in forward motion doing something that what came way too easy that wasn't good for you or for anybody around you. Um, let me see what else we got here. Um, now when the sun enters Capricorn, that's going to take you out of that Sagittarius and even more into Capricorn, and that's December 22nd, and I definitely feel like that happening for you, like that becoming a big deal. Um, of like everything I was saying even more so compounded. So the first part of the month up until Capricorn season is about you, you know, clearing yourself out, um, trying to get rid of any extra baggage that you're holding on to because Scorpio and Capricorn work really well. It's very harmonious and it can be very ruthless. And so that Saturn Pluto conjunction is kind of a harmonious conjunction. I don't know if, I feel like I haven't heard anybody say that, but it's kind of like, yeah, whatever, it's kind of nice. Saturn and Pluto, the same will, whatever, except if Saturn is laying down a karmic law and Pluto is being mischievous and Hades-like, because Pluto is also Hades, the god of the underworld, and doing something that's not supposed to do, then karma is gonna come after you and it's gonna be way worse. And I don't like that for Scorpio because I feel like Scorpio's already been dragged through the shit for like a couple years, actually kind of like a 10 years. This decade has not been one that is good for Scorpio placements. It's been pulling you darker and darker and darker and wondering if there is a way out of that. And it seems like maybe at the end, the only way out is to fight. It's not true, it's not to fight. It's easy, it's harmonious, it's good, it's pure. But wash off that decade. Wash it off, let it go. Move forward in power and emotion and, and feeling of love for yourself and your own heart and you know the desires of your own heart. I don't know, I, I keep saying that, but like that's just that's where I'm going. Am I making sense to you, Scorpio? I want to see you Scorpios shine. You never get to, and you're going to get to. You're gonna be stabilized. You're going to be building in 2020, working. This 2020 starts off with Saturn conjunct your ruling planet. It's like an amazing thing for Scorpios if they can allow it to be something full of love and positivity and not something that's going to destroy the world or destroy you. Don't be fearful of that. This is good for you stabilizing your energy after a very unstable decade. So if it's stabilizing right at the beginning of the decade, hello decade, way to build Scorpios. Like this is you, this is you, your time. So say goodbye to your past, let it go. Let your past go. And you know, use the harmonious energy to get out from underneath, you know, where you've been. And really like learn to look and manifest by setting your intentions in a way that, you know, maybe they could happen. Just because it hasn't happened to you before doesn't mean you're gonna continually be screwed this next, next decade, especially if you're listening and following your heart. Anyway, that is you, Scorpio, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye. Hi, Sagittarius. So this is your month of December prediction. For most of you Sagittarius, this is your birthday, so I want to say happy birthday. And um, let's get into the major brunt of this all. Uh, so your ruling planet immediately December 2nd is leaving your home sign after a year going into Capricorn. Pretty much this is what I'm going to be talking about for this entire time because um, I think it's a good month for you to start paying attention to a huge shift in your life. So that's what I'm gonna focus on for you guys. If you have your sun, your moon, or your rising in uh, Sagittarius, this is definitely a big change for you and I wanna help you navigate it. So if you want to know a little bit more about other placements, go look at your other placements to see what I have to say about certain transits that might be hitting you. Um, but for the most part, I just feel like Every day is, could be a struggle um, with Jupiter leaving your sign. You see, Sagittarius and Jupiter are naturally optimistic, um, playful, positive. Doesn't mean that Sagittarius is are. A lot of Sagittarius can be really depressed. Why? Because life on Earth is not positive. Um, also, Sagittarius' mind is always expanding. So Jupiter and Sagittarius has caused a complete destruction of that said mind 
expanding it even more to the point where you probably feel like you have no walls around your brain anymore, that you just are open to anything and you are going to be receiving messages and giving messages and taking messages and you're all ready to be like the wise old seer of the world. And then Jupiter goes into Capricorn and it's like, no more, none of that. You did good. Now let's close up these walls on your mind. However, wherever they are, like here's your mind, let's close them up out here or here, wherever that was being told. And let's, uh, let's move forward with Capricorn. Now Capricorn is Sagittarius's first house or what we could call your second house. It really depends on like where you are. That's why I don't, I don't know if you've noticed, but when I do transits and stuff, I don't talk about the houses because it's not a guarantee that this is where your house is. It doesn't really mean that. Um, but Capricorn is going forward. It's causing stability. And so the stability for Sagittarius is one of stable walls built around your gold mind. Your gold mine, your gold mine, get it? If you're a Sagittarius, you would, because that was gold. Now it's not. Okay, so you have a lot of good things. You have a lot of good ideas. You have a lot of good experiences. You've gained wisdom. You've gained power, but you haven't gained authority. You haven't gained structure. Maybe people aren't listening to you the way that you thought that they should based on what you know. Um, maybe it took this entire year, Sagittarius, for you to finally align yourself with your soul purpose. So now you're there. Now you're on soul purpose power. You feel good. So now you got to stabilize that energy. Now you got to bring it home. You got to work through it. And so December, you're going to probably feel, I mean, because the sun is still in your sign, right? Sun's still in Sagittarius. There's still, um, Mercury is going to enter Sagittarius December 9th. So there's still like the Sagittarius boost, but that Jupiter that rules it all, that rules you is like, oh, Capricorn now. Stop learning. You've learned enough. And I think that that becomes like, okay, if you've been investigating a lot, if you've been trying to figure out the reason why people are doing things or maybe even like been in such a spiritual realm, like a 4D world, you haven't really been able to, you know, fix your 3D world at all. You haven't been able to really make sure that the people around you know that you're serious and take you seriously. Um, so this is it's now that time for you to do that, which can be a little bit hard because yeah, you'll be looking for like reasons to keep investigating, to keep looking at people, to keep observing and to keep, you know, reporting, <laughs> observing and reporting. When in reality, it's time to just stop, collect yourself, maybe lay low for a little while. You don't always have to be out in the world. And that's going to seem a little bit weird because Sagittarius just stabilizes themselves in the world. You stabilize yourself like the midheaven. Sagittarius rules the ninth house. The 10th house is ruled by Capricorn. The midheaven is between, which is like the world and your connection to that. So you feel a little bit like now it's time to put, you know, your stuff forward. But I would say take a break, especially before the sun hits Capricorn, um, because Mercury is going to end up in Capricorn on, on the 29th. So, and that's your opposing planet. So you can, don't 100% worry about the 29th, but that is something that might shift for you just internally, bring things a little bit more internally to you. But that Capricorn energy is when it really happens. And sometimes something that hits your midheaven, it shocks you down to your IC. Like your midheaven is your MC, your IC, it, or your Imam Coli is also your Nadir. And that is your innermost part. So when the Sagittarius switches to Capricorn energy, it actually shoots a shockwave down to that innermost part, which can make you feel very vulnerable and naked where you're exposed. And so up until the 20th or the 22nd, sorry, Sagittarius season is still happening. Still a good time for you to focus in on yourself, cleaning up your own life and not trying to like expand your horizons any more than they already have but to really get back to your personal structure, to building yourself in your, your foundation, right? And then 
getting out and being like, you know what, I'm gonna grab 2020 <laughs> by its reins and ride it like a fucking horse and take it down that old town road and ride until you can't no more. I don't know those words. So that's really a lot of what December is for you. And I do think that Sagittarius is, because Jupiter's been in your sign, you have been aligning. You had no choice but to align with who you're meant to be. For some people that took everything away and then you might not have anything left. I know when Jupiter was in my sign of Libra, um, it made me done with everything I was doing. But I still tried to do more for the next year and it, it lost its luster for me. So I'm just giving that to you as like a warning. If you didn't switch careers, if you didn't make a change, um, but you were worn out of the one that you were in, think about the next phase of life as figuring out where you wanna go next. And um, this December is the perfect transits for you to really like hone in on those desires that you have, like the desires of your heart and everything. Anyway, um, that is really it for you, um, Sagittarius, and um, I will talk to you later. Okay, bye. Hi, Capricorn. This is your December prediction. So, December 2nd, Jupiter enters your sign. Ah, congratulations to Capricorn. Jupiter's in your sign, and then you're going to get this big old... Pluto Saturn conjunction where your Saturn sign is all up in Pluto and everybody's worried about it. So congratulations, Capricorn. You've become badass. These are not real songs. Not good at this. Okay, so <laughs> let's see what this has to do with anything for your life. When Jupiter, the sign of luck, expansion and blessings and growth, and fame enter your sign, you will be aligned with your soul purpose. Everybody is during any Jupiter chant, especially these last Sagittarius to Capricorn. But since it is Capricorn, this is the first, December 2nd, the first day of the rest of your life, okay? Because now Jupiter is going to be exposing all of your faults and all of your weaknesses and all of your positive points and all of your powers. You might feel like stuffing your face and overeating and that's okay. Sometimes you just have to do that um, because sometimes it's hard to be exposed. It's hard to be the king. And when Jupiter goes to your sign, that's what happens. You're the king or the queen of this, of the expansion. The, the focus is on you. And for better or for worse, focus on you. <laughs> I mean, that's exactly what it is. It's not always good. So it's been important for Capricorn during this last Sagittarius Jupiter transit, while that's been sort of in your 12th house of wherever you've been, because Sagittarius is considered the 12th house of Capricorn. Uh, you, I do this in quotes because it's not necessarily your 12th house, depending on where, where your chart lies, okay? But Sagittarius is the 12th house of Capricorn. So what's been happening should be a lot of introspection really you know working yourself out getting prepared for this next year to come and i feel like that's important and there's probably some part of you that didn't produce as much as you usually do or maybe felt thwarted in your plans to produce because when jupiter expands your mind it can cause a lot of psychological warfare it can cause a lot of um, fatigue and even nauseousness and not feeling like what you're doing is correct. And that's all because Jupiter's been trying to put you on the right path and make you align with who you're meant to be. So now, while Jupiter goes into Capricorn, it should feel a little bit better, a little bit more optimistic. Things are gonna get better for you, but they might get worse first. And I'm not trying to say that to scare you, I'm just trying to say that sometimes exposure, especially for a private sign like Capricorn, can be kind of scary. And you know, Capricorn rules the 10th house, which is the public image, but the only reason that Capricorn can handle that is because Capricorn placement, sun, moon, and rising are naturally more internal to protect their gold before they give it to the world because they're smart about it. A lot of other signs get into the 10th house and they're like, bah! you know, like, <laughs> I'm just saying that, but you don't do that. Capricorns don't do that because they're not stupid, okay? Libras do that. I'm a Libra, but Capricorns don't. And um, so while Jupiter's there, 
it's sort of forcing your hands to be like, hey everybody, look at me. And if you aren't ready or prepared with stuff, it might feel like you're not ready and you're incomplete and you don't know because you work hard for what you do and you take time to do it. And now this is saying no time, time's up, get it out now. And you might feel like you're not putting the proper stuff out to the world, that you're not doing what you're meant to do, um, that you need more time because um, Saturn is also time. And then as Saturn grows closer to Pluto, you're gonna really feel like you ran out of time because Pluto is transformation of that and it's transforming time. So it's, it's heavy stuff for you right now. It's stuff that you don't wanna be under. And I would say that there are other signs that definitely would enjoy being under that. Not you though. And um, so I want to let you know that it's okay to take it easy on yourself to say even though things are happening you know don't go on social media for a couple days if you can't um don't i mean like learn to say no if like somebody's i mean i don't think capricorns necessarily have a hard time saying no but during this time you might feel like you're gonna miss out on something if you say no you don't have to be a yes man jupiter is already a yes man and if it needs you somewhere it doesn't matter if you say no Jupiter's just gonna pull you by the hand and be like, no, no, you're coming anyway. You have to go experience this. So it's okay to be like, nah, just resist this for a little while. And I know it's always like a good thing to go with the flow, but fire and earth, there's no flow there. There's no water. I mean, Jupiter is is fire, you know, and um, it rules Sagittarius, it's fire. It's been in the fire. And then now it's going into the earth and it's almost like getting burnt out. And so there, you could be burnt out right now. And if you're burnt out, you might be burnt out just by your own mental fatigue and not because you actually created a lot. So you're like, okay, finally, I feel optimistic. I feel like I can create, I can make something happen. I can give it to the world and it's just too much. So take a nap, go to sleep. Remember that you're allowed to, especially right at this transitional time, to take it very easy on yourself. And I would say, don't burn out. Don't go fast and furious right now because you have an entire year of so much power hitting your ruling planet Saturn. And Jupiter being there, it's, this is your year. Um, this is your year, but at times it's not gonna seem like it's your year. And in fact, I will go to say that 2021 might be better for you as far as like feelings wise, but you will never get to 2021 if you don't give everything that you have to 2020 and also take it easy at the same time. You know, take your time, hurry up, the choice is yours and don't be late. That's what I need you to do, okay? It's like, no big deal. I don't know why you're freaking out about it. Um, um, Venus is also in Capricorn during this whole time because Venus recently entered Capricorn, so it's there for December, meaning you got a blessing on your life. Um, you're being helped, you're being, you're, the angels are holding your hands if you wanna go there. Like, this is good energy for you. It's really nice, but it can, if it feels too nice, it might force you to go do something that you're just not ready to do. And I would say keep incubating your good ideas until they are good, until they are perfect, so you can utilize that Jupiter energy to deliver something that you really, really are proud of. Um, and there's something else that I will have you know, when Jupiter is in your sign, sometimes it means that you do something that you're really proud of and it's not accepted by everybody. Why? Because when there's a lot of exposure on you and you're doing something, people might feel like it's too much and not know what to do with it and kind of want to look away. It doesn't mean that you're on the wrong track. It just means people aren't ready for you and that's on them, not on you. You need to keep doing you, keep giving your best life, keep putting one foot in front of the other. Now, the sun is going to enter your sign December 22nd. So that's when, you know, it's your birthday season where you might feel a lot more stabilized. The energy is a lot stable, a lot more stable. Um, and that's good. You know, utilize that to be with people, to see friends, to experience, you know, good times and um, to relax in, in knowing that you've got this and that it's, everything's going to be okay and to see even if, because you got Jupiter shining your light, like it might show you at this point that some people in your life aren't good for you and no better way to find that out than by being near them and observing. So remember that. 
Um, and then we have December 26th, the new moon in Capricorn. So it is your new moon. The moon is meeting up in Capricorn with your sun, uh, meaning you are getting the power of the night with your power of the sun, meaning there might for a lot of people feel pretty dark, but this is where you get to set your truest intention about who you really want to be. So by the 26th, it doesn't mean that you are fully going to be aware of where you're going or what you're meant to do in this life, um, but it's definitely going to be a powerful moment for you, at least stepping into the right direction. So during that new moon, I do think it's really important for any Capricorn, sun, moon, rising, to put your foot forward in the way that you want to go and set that intention. And if it aligns with what the universe wants, that intention will keep going on and on and on. If not, six months from now on your, you know, your half birthday, that could be thwarted. That plan could be gone. But for right now, I feel like that that new moon, it wants you to go there no matter what. It wants you to set an intention. It wants you to really see yourself. And sometimes failure is the best teacher. So don't be afraid to move forward, even if you're, even if it could be wrong, even if it could be the wrong direction. Um, there's no, I don't think you have time to consider whether or not it's dumb at this point. You just gotta go do it and see it. The universe wants you to do it. It wants you to have, to come into your power in one way or another. And it's definitely going to be this year that it does, whether it's the first six months or the seven, second six months of 2020, which I'll get into more when I do my 2020 prediction. But this is December for you. And um, it's a lot of what I believe that you will be doing and where you will be going. And uh, yeah, so Capricorn, just start getting ready. Start really feeling yourself out. Start understanding what your power is and how the universe is going to be utilizing it over 2020. And um, that is for you. Anyway, talk to you guys later. Bye. Hi Aquarius, this is your December 2019 prediction. I literally almost said 2012 prediction. I don't know why that was, that was ridiculous. Okay, so let's start this. This is an interesting month for you um, because besides like the full moon in Gemini, which is in um, trine, and sextile to you, which will be on the 12th. I, there's not a lot of Aquarian energy and this kind of happened before. Like, it's not like, it's even how we say so harmonious that what's gonna keep you down is any other placements in your chart this month. Um, because I do see you getting burnt out by people for sure because eventually what's going to happen is that your 11th house full of you know jupiter because jupiter is in sagittarius it's going to be entering capricorn the sun is going to leave sagittarius and go to capricorn where you were once like happy and full of life around friends you're now not even going to want to deal with that and that even comes to like what's the word your job uh, your networks, networking. If you do something with social media, the internet, you're probably already on the way of being burned out. So that means if it's your moon, you're emotionally burnt out by it, maybe even hurt by it. If, um, if it's your sun, you know, it's just kind of like adding a lot of fatigue. So you might be getting tired of people, which is funny to say, because I think Aquarius is always like, I'm always tired of people. You're different. You're a weirdo. You know, you're unique. You march to the beat of a different drummer. But at the same time, you also rule over the 11th house, which is networks, acquaintances, being in the party, you know, and, um, maybe even being the queen of the party or the king of the party. But sometimes you're just kind of done with it. And that's what happens leading up right before your birthday season. So it's the Sagittarius season at first in December, then it goes to Capricorn, and then it, it's you. So you know you're gearing up for this sort of like beautiful letdown right before you're reborn into your new solar return. And I'm seeing that in this month, especially because Jupiter was in Sagittarius, which was harmonious to you. And that was all last year. And Sagittarius and Aquarius, I mean, sometimes they can act like one mind. 
um, that because Sagittarius is, you know, expansion. So there's been so much growth and mind expansion and you have just grown like so much. And I don't think that it hurt you the way it even hurt the Sagittarius sign. It was like a, a beautiful sextile flow. You could turn it off and on when you wanted to. You were learning so much and really coming into your own. And then Jupiter goes into Capricorn on December 2nd and it's kind of like, okay, so that's over. Now I'm gonna work towards a new goal. And it's like, what is that new goal? The full moon in Gemini, December 12th, because it is harmonious to you, um, it might bring some of that harmony back so that you can start feeling like, okay, yeah, I. I get why I'm here. I'm gonna, I get what I'm supposed to be doing and where I'm supposed to be going. And that sounds like I'll, I'll know um, my truest potential by the 12th. But even still, because of the harmony, so much harmony, there's like so much harmony, it might not feel like anything's really being done, even if you're doing. And so it's easy to get into a grind during December for you. Now, December 20th, Venus enters Aquarius. So Venus goes into your sign. That to me feels like a little pick me up, something that could be really good. Um, but also if you're not, like say you're having a hard time with your relationships and Venus sort of enters that, it might make you feel more selfish and wanna be more isolated, which isn't naturally what happens when Venus enters Aquarius. Cause that can mean like, you're gonna get married. And it could mean that, it could mean that for you. Um, but most likely it could mean that you just don't wanna be in a relationship. Or if you've been single, you might just jump into the first relationship that like says hi and winks at you. And you're like, oh, okay, do people wink anymore? I don't know. They're like, hey, and you're like, oh baby, I'm gonna get with that. You know, on the 20th, it can make you do something that I don't think is that great for you. And so I would say just, be paying attention to the relationships around you, the people around you, and um, allow isolation to take place. If you are in a relationship, you don't have to do anything crazy. I think that you're smart. I mean, Aquarius is smart. I'm feeling that even in December, you're observant, you're calculated, you're protected. You don't have to make a rash decision and you're not being forced by the universe, unless of course, like, you have a Leo placement or something, but, um, or even Libra or whatever, but like you're not being forced by the universe in your Aquarius pl placement to do anything insane. Um, you're just meant to watch and listen and wait for your moment. I mean, Uranus has been in Taurus now for a few months and that's caused a lot of stability. And so I, I feel like with the sun then moving into Capricorn, Jupiter, being in Capricorn, you're getting even more stable energy directed your way. So it's okay to allow stability, especially after all of that mind expansion and even growth. And you know, you could have even experienced a lot of fame this last year, um, fame for something that you know. And uh, if that's the case, your fame then needs to be stabilized. And so all that's happening is stabilization, which could mean that like you level off your growth or your career sort of levels off. It's not bad. It's just not exciting, I guess I could say. Like that's what I'm, what I'm seeing a lot of here. Um, yeah, because you don't, I mean, you really don't even have to worry about that it's not insane because you'll get your insanity. I mean, don't worry. Insanity is coming for you <laughs> in January, um, in February, but this is really what that is. And so as long as you're, you know, just staying true to your own path, to what you know, because you guys do know and you want to know and you choose to know. And even if I were to tell you something, you might want to do the opposite. So I should have spent this entire time telling you to party. Make sure you party and make a lot of decisions and it's gonna be really dramatic. <laughs> None of that stuff's true. Um, and maybe maybe in the long run, um, what I'm saying for you guys is that you don't really need to know what's gonna come this month. It's, this is about feeling it out, about watching and observing and just listening to yourself. These predictions, they're nothing that you can't control or be in authority over. 
And I think that's a powerful position to be in, even if it doesn't seem like you have the authority um, because nothing's happening. I mean, but you still do. That makes sense. You're stable energy. And so allow yourself to remain stable energy and to keep that going um, by listening to what you need and what you want. Anyway, that is your Aquarius, and I'll talk to you later. Okay, hi Pisces. This is your December, and I feel a lot, a lot of energy for you this month. Last month, it was just kind of like, hmm, just go to sleep or something, take a nap. But this month is really big for you because Pisces doesn't do really good with a lot of like challenge transits. Okay, some, it's, this is how you can know about astrology when you're a little astrology lesson. <laughs> um, a lot of times you'll see a square or an opposition it's a hard aspect and it'll be like, oh, this is a challenge. This means that this is going to suck or it's going to hurt or whatever and that everyone's going to hate it. Um, but some signs need that and they like it. Other signs would perform more harmonious aspects because those are the ones that gently nudge them in the right direction. Pisces is a sign that enjoys harmonious aspects. Any hard aspect, even a conjunction, something really just like right on you is difficult. It doesn't feel right. <laughs> it doesn't feel nice to you at all, actually. Um, it's like it for it's like almost like you are gas. Like it's what I'm you're like a gaseous material, and anything hard just sort of like is capable of just like entering you and filling that gas up with its own entity, and then you have to take it all in, and you don't, and you start to feel icky, and you feel less like yourself, and you have to deal with all that before you can move forward. So what do you do when you see something like that coming at you? You like hide, Pisces hides, or um, pushes themselves in a Virgo type way, which is about being detail oriented and grinding and yada, yada, yada. But when you have a harmonious aspect come at you and it's just kind of like slowly goes up in you and like you start, start hanging out, you start like testing each other and like, okay, come on in a little, ooh, you feel nice here, you know, like that. Does that make sense to you? This is how, this is how I think of Pisces. Um, so you're just like letting it slowly fill you up and push you in the right direction and then you say goodbye to you and it's all nice and harmonious and yay. And Jupiter is about to enter Capricorn, which is that harmony. Now when Jupiter is in Sagittarius, it was causing you to expand your mind, which was not what you wanted to be doing because your mind is already as expanded as it possibly wants to go and there's no want anymore for that. <laughs> so you run away from it or try to take the high road as much as possible. Even if you were on the low road, you told yourself you were on the high road. So it's just the way that it went. So you now get to have this Jupiter energy expand Capricorn and Capricorn's like, Hey, you want to have an empire Pisces? Yeah, you do. Okay, cool. Let's go make our empire. And you're like, okay, I can feel that. Yeah. I feel you coming in the air, moving me to this place. Let's, let's, build something together. And that's the beginning of the month in December. <laughs> um, there's also Neptune just went direct. And so you are feeling like the, I'm going to move forward way. So there's a lot of this, like, I, I can't talk to you without dancing. You just got to feel the dance. You are not humor. You're not humor. You are not human. You are a dancer and you're dancing and you're moving this and you're going forward and everything's nice and you don't have to duck because things are working out. Until December 12th, you have a full moon in Gemini, which is going to bring a lot of clarity into the, what you've been thinking. The ideas that you've had it might shed some light on it and you might find that you were wrong about a few things and that might hurt. Um, but just keep, as long as you can remember to keep moving forward and to apologize if you need to apologize or uh, to eat crow if you have to eat crow or to just stand in your truth if you have to stand in your truth but to truly like understand that as you're moving forward uh, because it's right before then too mercury enters sagittarius so there's a lot of mind trauma that could happen but you're pisces and your pisces normally isn't like into he's just really not into all that stuff like all the other mutable signs gemini virgo both ruled by Mercury, Sagittarius, ruled by Jupiter. Um, those things, they're just like, man, so far off your way. Even though they made you who you are, it's just not what you want to even 
be around anymore. So this full moon is not really a nice full moon for you, but it only affects you if you want it to affect you. So I guess what I'm trying to tell you is let this full moon affect you. Let it in, let it give you a punch, let it move your gaseous particles around, separate them so that you can reform yourself. Because I think that while you're sort of building your empire and this is telling you to build your empire and you're feeling good about it, you also need to take in some negativity and what this will happen, it's gonna make you fall asleep. Like I think in the full moon in Gemini after that, you're gonna be really tired, um, but it's going to be very good for you to um, re re like relax and rest. So the beginning of the month, definitely move forward, put your plans in motion, start working towards something, and then be prepared to take in some information you definitely don't want and then sleep on it. And that's okay. Um, Every once in a while, Pisces needs to gut punch and then you can like rebuild it up. Um, yeah, and so Neptune being direct, everything's pushing forward. And then December 20th, Mercury in Sagittarius is going to square Neptune in Pisces. And so that's also, that's sort of a harsh aspect. It's gonna sort of throw you off. So this really is like, it's such a big month for Pisces energy. Uh, that Mercury in Sagittarius, because Neptune's going direct Pisces, it's another gut punch on the 20th. So, what I can say about this as you're dancing and you get thrown off like your groove and just like can't groove anymore, it's going to be a test of will and strength but it's so important to pay absolute attention on these days, when these things hit, when the power is taken from you or the power is given to you, pay attention to what it is, take it in, let it build your walls up a little bit, um, maybe even stop some of that gaseous flow from like moving too much, give it a little bit of boundaries. And I don't know why I'm really 100% feeling that way. As I've been channeling a lot of messages this entire video, I wasn't actually planning on it. And um, now that I have, I'm like, okay, well, I hope that works out because I really wanted to go down the list of all the things, but it's I've definitely felt more in this video than I have in my other prediction videos, like from like a divine source that I'm trying to channel, telling me to tell you that you have to take certain things even when I don't feel like I can't see it. Okay, if that makes sense. I'm like not really fully understanding it. Um, I also have a Pisces ascendant, so I, I think I'm like sitting here like, what? What's supposed to happen here? I'm not supposed to just keep dancing. I have to take something in. What's going to happen? And then I'm starting to be like, whoa, what's going to happen? Sorry, I'm just being up front with you guys, like letting you know my process here. <laughs> I'm like, what is this? I see a lot, a lot of like power entering Pisces through knowledge. And so... Maybe you felt like you don't know what's against you or you're confused about what you're, where you're supposed to go, but um, once you're filled up with n knowledge, this mercury, you will have all the power you need to keep dancing into 2020. And um, there's a reason why maybe you've been tired a lot, lethargic, don't really know. You've been resting up for this point. So if your body has been rested, and you've been allowing yourself to take it easy, you're going to be able to have the strength to take whatever you need to take in, this knowledge that you might not have really wanted or even knew existed in the universe, right? And um, it's going to hit you. It is, and so, you, you know, Neptune's in your sign as well. And um, because it's been retrograde, it's just caused a lot of internal like, not even like thinking about others and what others are doing, but now that it's more external and it's pushing forward, you do have to deal with a lot more of what people are thinking. And uh, that knowledge is sometimes annoying, you know, like what everybody else is doing, what they think of you, where they're going. Like that's not, that's not the way that you've been on Pisces. But now it's kind of asking you 
to see what other people think of you, to see what, how you impact the world because of all these other harmonious aspects like Jupiter and Capricorn and the sun going into Capricorn. And then the new moon on Capricorn, December 26th, this is a lot of authoritative power, you know, just vibing with you really well. So it's going to put you in the forefront more. It's going to get you out in the world more. So let, let the knowledge hit you. So at least you know, and then you can take it. Is it criticism? Is it warranted? Is it unwarranted? I mean, that's up to you and that's up to your own understanding of where you're at. And if you know, if you feel like the what's coming at you is unwarranted, then it is because that's the way that you're going to act to it anyway. If you feel like it is warranted, then it's warranted. Um, because that's, it's all about how you're going to react to it. And then if, if you're wrong, the universe is going to expose that in you later on. But at this point in, in December, it's just about you taking in the information and, um, allowing it to, allowing your intuition and your clairvoyance to sort of understand it and unpack it and see why it's there. If this makes sense. Um, cause that's really what I'm getting. I'm like, it's not an easy month, but I don't think you're going to be sitting crying. It's not about that. It's, you might have some tears. Um, but I, they're leading to something very powerful for you and in your sign and something very good at the end of it all. And I do think it's like, it has something to do with the end of the age of Pisces. Um, you know, getting to like stand on your throne and, uh, pass the torch to Aquarius in even a way like, and there's nothing better to be than to be like the retired king or queen that gets to do whatever you want to do and to be free. And I think that's what it is. Like Pisces has been chained down by the age, but now you get to be free to do whatever you want to do. And in that freedom comes, you're all of a sudden having to understand what the world thinks of you and what you even think of the world and how it is. And having that knowledge will give you the power to finally change things for the better and make them the way that you want them to be. Because just because it's you've been your age of Pisces doesn't mean that every Pisces is happy with how the age has turned out. And so now you have a chance where you're not chained down by it anymore. You're not chained to the rhythm. You can actually utilize your own power from the collective consciousness existing in your power to make great change in great waves in the, in the future. And, um, so basically that is what I have for you Pisces. And, um, I hope that it didn't bring up more questions and answers. I just want you to be aware that, you know, go with the flow like you usually do. Um, but also be willing to take certain things in and, um, no matter what they are, no matter how painful, but allow your intuition to see through them to make sure that they're good and pure and of a divine message and not of evil and something attacking you for just being true to who you are so that you have the power to go change the world. <laughs> yeah, no biggie. Anyway, that is your Pisces. I'll talk to you later.